Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin shared some information on the government aid provided to various target groups during the COVID-19 pandemic today. And he also had some comments on the white flag campaign. Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin had a message for those who have been seeking aid during the COVID-19 pandemic. In a press conference today, he said, the government is offering aid to various target groups and distribution will be done fairly. He said, the government didn't want a situation where one person gets 10 boxes of supplies while others do not get any. He also addressed the community-based white flag campaign, which had been providing food and other necessities to people who hung a white flag outside their houses. Tak payah naik bendera putih ke hitam. Oh, nak naik bendera biru tak apa. <laughs> Maksud saya tadi, kita tahu di mana dan di kementerian dia ada rekod. Muhyiddin said this after his visit to the Bako Prihatin Negara Aid Distribution Centre at Dewan Perdana Noor in Putrajaya this morning. The aid centre had prepared 420,000 packages of staple food worth around 50 ringgit each, which will benefit 1.68 million recipients. Those who need food aid can apply by contacting Talian Kase at 15999 or the nearest social welfare office. Information can also be found on the Women, Family and Community Development Ministry social media platforms. During the press conference, Muhyiddin also called for Malaysians to be patient and promised that the light was now visible at the end of the tunnel. So these are the initiative forward. Dan tempoh jangka masa ikut plan pemulihan itu hanya sehingga akhir tahun. Jadi bersabarlah. Jangan kata kerajaan tak bagi tumpuan. Jangan sekali percaya dengan kempen kerajaan gagal. Minta maaf, saya tak cakap politik di sini. The Prime Minister also has some good news for those of you who have been fully vaccinated. But before that, being an independent media outlet is unfortunately pretty tough. And we need your help to continue what we're doing. Don't worry, we're not going to ask you to put a flag on your house. Instead, click on the link in the description below to find out how you can help contribute. Now, let's take a look at the news from the Prime Minister. The government is looking at the possibility of relaxing COVID-19 restrictions for individuals who have completed two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. This was announced by Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin today. According to Mohidin, this could include allowing them to dine in at restaurants and to travel. Mutakhir sekali ialah saya telah minta jawatan kuasa pengurusan ni untuk menilai semula bagi mereka-mereka yang telah dapat vaksin dua suntikan supaya mereka akan diberikan kelonggaran-kelonggaran. Ya, sama ada dari si perjalanan ataupun pergi uh, ke kedai ataupun makan di uh, apa, restoran ini petanda supaya kita nak menunjukkan bahawa sementara kita menguruskan COVID maka kehidupan rakyat mungkin sedikit demi sedikit akan kembali seperti masa-masa yang lepas Mohidin also called for patients as a national recovery plan is set to be implemented until the end of the year He added that the National COVID-19 Immunization Program is running smoothly and there was a light at the end of the tunnel in the ongoing battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Previously, Kari Jamaluddin, who is the minister in charge of coordinating the vaccination efforts, said that the government will be coming out with the guidelines for fully vaccinated people next month. After a slow start, Malaysia has ramped up daily vaccinations with around 435,000 doses administered yesterday. Although there was some positive news on the number of COVID-19 vaccines administered up to today, the COVID-19 situation in the country, however, it doesn't look so good. Malaysia saw a record high of new COVID-19 cases today for the third consecutive day. The Health Ministry reported 13,215 new COVID-19 cases, with the Klang Valley recording over half of the cases. Selangor had the highest number of new cases with 6,120, and this was followed by Negeri Sembilan with 1,603 cases and Kuala Lumpur with 1,499 new cases. Kedah and Penang also broke records, registering 695 and 509 new cases cases respectively. Meanwhile, 434,828 doses of the COVID-19 vaccine were administered yesterday. Health Minister Dr. Adam Baba said that this was the highest number of COVID-19 vaccines administered so far. He said with this development, the total number of individuals who have completed both the vaccine doses stands at 4,003,266. Leadership by example is very important and according to Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Kairi Jamaluddin, the government made some errors here and there with regards to the compliance with COVID-19 SOPs. 
Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Kari Jamaluddin conceded that errors had been made by several government leaders in setting a good example against the battle with COVID-19. In an interview with Australian-based Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, the minister in charge of vaccination efforts in the country acknowledged that some government ministers have been flouting the standard operating procedures, or SOPs, which had damaged the credibility of the lockdown. In said interview, it was noted that Kairi said, Leadership by example is very important, and I think on that score, we have made some errors there. Among the leaders that have been caught violating the COVID-19 SOP recently include Federal Territories Minister Anwar Musa, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department Mustafa Muhammad, and Dewan Rayat Deputy Speaker Rashid Hasnun. Kairi added that it was getting harder for the people to comply with the SOP due to fatigue. COVID-19 cases in Malaysia have hit an all-time high with 11,618 cases yesterday. However, the silver lining is that Malaysia is now seeing one of the fastest vaccination rates in the world after a slow start, as noted by the Australian reporter. Just yesterday, Malaysia had administered 434,828 doses of COVID-19 vaccines. Kairi said, I think we are at the stage now where we really need to vaccinate ourselves out of this situation that we have found ourselves in. In that effort, Kairi noted that Putrajaya had ensured not to put all eggs in one basket by securing COVID-19 vaccine supplies from multiple sources. Good Morning Jishwar is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink made in Malaysia. It is suitable for those who are lactose intolerant. Research made by local universities found that more than 90% of our Malaysian population are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerance can cause bloated stomach and diarrhea. Good Morning G-Sure helps to improve the immune system, reduce the risk of illnesses and helps to improve general well-being and strengthen our bodies. A happy family starts with a healthy family. I'm selective, healthy and going strong at the age of 52. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. Shellfish, red meat, and beer. If you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purine, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1,000 milligrams per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 milligrams daily, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural. It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon flavored and sugar free. Ural, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. With the movement control order in place, many people have depended on the e-hailing industry to get essentials and also for transport. With this, Sagambut MP Hanayo has called on the government to treat drivers as frontliners and also to allow for them to be vaccinated immediately. Sagambut MP Hanayo has called on the government to protect e-hailing drivers and delivery riders from the dangers of the COVID-19 infection which they are exposed to daily. In a post on Facebook, she said thousands of patients visit the COVID-19 Assessment Center or CAC daily and some may choose e-hailing services to take them there. And the government should protect these industry players from catching the infection and infecting others. You have said that three urgent steps must be taken to protect around 200,000 e-hailing drivers and delivery riders on the road daily. She said the Ministry of Transport and the COVID-19 Immunization Task Force must immediately vaccinate drivers and delivery riders. She added that this wasn't rocket science and she was surprised that they were not treated as frontliners, even though they are categorized as essential service providers in every movement control order. She also called for the Ministry of Health 
to provide guidance and encouragement on ventilation for these e-hailing rides. This is crucial for those transporting thousands of customers to CAC centers across Malaysia. Other than these, you urge the government to share data from Maise Jatra with relevant industry players. She pointed out how currently, e-hailing drivers are not provided any information on the customer's COVID-19 status until the customer is in the car and scans the QR code. There was a risk of exposure, and the chain of infection which could follow must be avoided. You called on ministers who can immediately fix these issues within their respective jurisdictions to act. She added that perhaps the Selangor government and other state government can and should be their federal counterpart to it in arranging for vaccination for the 200,000 e-hailing frontliners. Former AMNO Supreme Council member Lokman or Adam was sentenced to one month's jail for contempt of court in former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's 1MDB trial. Former AMNO leader Lokman or Adam has been sentenced to a month's jail by the Kuala Lumpur High Court today. Lokman was found guilty of contempt of court in relation to former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's 2.28 billion ringgit 1MDB corruption case. The prosecution has sought to cite Lokman, a former AMNO Supreme Council member, for contempt over the threatening of witnesses in the trial. Judge Colin Lawrence Sukira ruled that Lokman's action of lodging a police report and making media statements amounted to a threat against the eight prosecution witness and other potential witness in the 1MDB trial. However, the judge allowed a stay of execution on the custodial sentence against Lokman, pending an appeal to the Court of Appeal. Today was scheduled for the decision of the contempt of court application. The application is over two alleged incidents in 2019 involving Amhari Effendi Nazaruddin, who was former special officer of Najib. Amhari, the eighth prosecution witness, had testified in the ongoing 1MDB corruption trial against Najib. That's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook to get the latest headlines over there as well. If you would like to support the independent media, please do consider a subscription to malaysiakini.com. If you're heading out, don't forget your mask and when you can do, try to stay home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay safe, Malaysia. Mm -hmm.